So, um, as an introduction, renal cell cancer is diagnosed each year, around 330,000 uh, patients, slightly different numbers than Dr. Sharma, with greater than 140,000 deaths worldwide. We know well that drugs targeting VEGF and its receptor, or mTOR, are standard therapies currently in advanced renal cell carcinoma. And one of our major problems in, in the field is that resistance to VEGF and mTOR-targeted therapy is really a problem. It's a major challenge that we face for improving treatment outcome. Emerging data also suggest that resistance to VEGF inhibition that develops with time is associated with actually alternative pro-angiogenic and pro-invasive pathways, including the MET and the Axel pathways. So what's cabozantinib? Cabozantinib is an oral small molecule inhibitor of the tyrosine kinases including MET, Excel, and is a backbone of VEGF receptors. We conducted a single arm trial of cabozantinib that showed the clinical activity in heavily pretreated RCC patient and published that study last year. So the international open phase three trial meteor study that you will hear about in more details tomorrow evaluated the efficacy and safety of cabozantinib compared to a common used second-line therapy, Everolimus, in patients who already progressed on VEGF receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitors. This is the study design, 650 patients, advanced RCC, mostly, I mean, all clear cell histology with measurable disease who progressed on prior VEGF TKI within six months of uh, treatment, no limit on prior number of therapies on the Meteor trial, and antibodies that target PD-1 and PDL one were allowed. These patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive cabozantinib at 60 milligram once a day or everolimus 10 milligram once a day. <coughs> Crossover was not allowed on the Meteor study. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival by an independent, not an investigator assessed, an independent radiology review committee with secondary endpoint including overall survival, response rate, and safety. So, the study met its primary endpoint. Progression-free survival with cabozantinib was 7.4 months compared to 3.8 months with Everolimus. This was highly statistically significant with a hazard ratio of 0.58 corresponding to a 42% decrease in the risk of death or progression with a p-value less than 0.001. Response rate was 21% with cabozantinib, again, centrally reviewed, versus 5% with everolimus, and again, statistically significant. So we, when we planned the protocol, we decided to have an interim analysis for overall survival at the primary, at the progression-free survival time, knowing that it, this only consisted in almost 50% of events. So at an interim overall survival uh, benefit, cabozantinib um, resulted versus everolimus, the hazard ratio for survival comparing both was 0 0.67. The median cannot yet be estimate, estimated due to the frequent early censoring. In fact, after the last patient was enrolled on the meteor study, the median follow-up was only six months. So those median cannot be estimated, but I think this is very encouraging. With a hazard ratio of 0.67, uh, there's a 33% decrease in the risk of uh, death, and we are continuing to follow these patients. So this is the interim overall survival. How do we put this in the context of other therapies in the second or later line setting in metastatic RCC who received, for example, one prior line of therapy sunetinib, which is the mo most commonly used um, first-line therapy. Meteor, the study I will be presenting tomorrow on behalf of my colleagues, is on the left in um, yellow compared to um, the control arm on the same study versus uh, record one, which is the study that led to Everolimus approval, exitinib uh, out of the access study, and sorafenib. The response rate on the Meteor study with cabozantinib is 22% compared to anywhere between 1% to 11% with other agent, Everolimus, Exitinib, and Sorafenib. PFS 9.1 months in this subgroup that receives sunitinib only, which is a very common clinical scenario, compared to 
anywhere between 3.4 and 4.8 months with other agents. And the discontinuation rate due to adverse event is the same in general, 9 to 14% with all the drugs. So in conclusion, we conclude cabozentinib significantly improved PFS compared to Everolimus and RC patient after prior VEGFTKI therapy. We think at an interim analysis, overall survival results show a strong trend favoring cabozentinib. The safety profile is acceptable and tolerability is similar to other VEGFTKIs in this population. Cabozentinib represent a potential new treatment option for second or later line therapy for renal cell carcinoma. Thank you.